I love that we talked about that, Saviour and Lord. I love that you were talking about, Holly, um, he's Saviour, but then he becomes Lord. And I think there is something to be said when he becomes Lord. Mm -hmm. It is the, not my will, but yours be done. Mm -hmm. And what I've discovered in my life, I think this is a constant. I think this happens throughout your life. I don't think it's a one-time sacrificial obedience because I could I can know pivotal moments where God asked me to say no to something and also to pick something up that I didn't want to pick up, Mm. um, that I've had to yield my will. Mm -hmm. Because we often look at it, well, I see this far and we think we know best about our lives, but God has actually ordained every step. He's written them in a book um, and he's seen them before we even walk them out. And so we have to trust that the one who created us knows us best and what he's doing when he's asking us to surrender. Number one, he, we realize that who's actually in charge, him, not us, but also that he knows the best outcome for us. And I, you know, I've been trying to teach my daughter this because she's 17, you know, and she's in this season of seeing that when you yield and obey, that it's a killjoy to your life. Like God's asking so much of you. But what she, what I've been trying to help her understand is that surrender and obedience, actually you gain more than you ever dreamed or imagined. And that's what I think the enemy comes in to lie to us and say, well, look at the money and look at the influence and look at the opportunity. Uh, But God goes, but I I need to test your heart because actually what I've got for you is greater than you could even imagine. And you've limited yourself to this. And God says, actually, what I see for you in the spirit is so fast and great that if you just trust me, but if you're willing, and I love that God honors our decision, he honors our choices, but I've just learned that the the walk of obedience, man, it leads to a life that you could never yeah. imagine, even though at times it's felt painful and, you know, limited. Mm-hmm. Alex, I love that you talked about willing and obedient mm-hmm. because you can be obedient and unwilling yeah. or you can be willing and not obedient. Like I'm will I I'm I'm going to think about that. I'm going to go along with it. And I love that you brought up Abraham Stephanie because when Abraham is going up to worship, he looks at his servant when they said, "Well, where's the offering?" And he says, "God will provide and we will come back to you." And so he actually had a revelation that because God is the one who gave him Isaac that God was the one who could raise Isaac up if that's what needed to happen. And of course, we know he saw the ram caught in the thicket. And in that moment, he has, so it's not only about worship, it's not only about love and obedience, but he had a revelation that had never been declared about God before. He saw Jehovah Jireh. Mm -hmm. He saw the God who sees my needs and provides for them. Mm -hmm. So there is provision in obedience and there is lack in disobedience. Even if it looks like maybe at first it might be the the way to have money, uh, in the long run, it'll end up being disobedient and destruction and loss. You know, I, I also love that you guys brought up the difference says that, Holly, that's what God said to you. I I remember being a brand new Christian. I was married for about six months and we had a gym membership and I went to this dance class and all of a sudden I realized we were dancing to music that was, the lyrics were absolutely horrific. (laughs) And I seemed to be the only person in the room that could hear the lyrics And I said, wait a minute, did they just say, and it's so bad, I wouldn't even repeat it. It was so bad. I said, did they just say that? And everybody was like, yeah, he just said that. And I felt so grieved in my spirit. And I'm driving home afterwards. And I've heard the Holy Spirit say, do not go there again. Mm. He said, dance is worship for you. Mm. And he said, so I do not want you dancing to what diminishes me or my order or those created in my image. And so what did I do? I got to dinner with some of my friends, 
throw it out on the table, tell them all they need to, they all need to quit their dance class, they need to get out of jazzercise, they need to get out of aerobics. And and, and they didn't receive it. I'm like, really? you all, this really? is what the Lord is saying. Yeah. <laughs> this is what the Lord is saying. And, and I thought, well, my friends are a bunch of disobedient, unwilling people. And when I was driving home, God said to me, I told you that. Yeah. I didn't tell you to say that to everybody else. He said, yeah. that's the relationship that you and I have. Do not put your convictions mm -hmm. on other people because it just brings condemnation and bondage. So I, I love that Stephanie, Alex, Holly, you know, we've all been trying to so carefully wrap that around. Lori's just always sweet, yeah. but we have some, we have some borderline naughty women in the mix here, <laughs> uh, better together. So... I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.